Hi, I'm Mark Baer. I'm with Paul Sapel. This is Conversations and Collaborations. Uh, this is our last uh, segment. So when I got here today, I was explaining to Paul that I'm in the process of doing, I want to do three big white canvases with the, uh, with, the, with the mica material. I'm, I'm looking for a certain material to give me a, a glow in the, in the paintings. Like a reflective like, quality. Like the reflectors yeah. on street lighting. And, and I, I come to Paul with this because again, as we were just talking about alchemy in a kind of in a metaphysical sense, uh, your, one of your expertise and your trademark is using uh, different, uh, chemi uh, different uh, matter, I guess. How, yeah. how, how do I say this? Yeah, materials, uh, matter. Different, yeah. different materials. And, 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 and again, going back to your, where we started this, your trip through the Southwest, where you pull over the side of the road, where you just showed me this bag of, of, of sand that you collected. I thought, well, how'd you get that? Did you call Amazon? I mean, no, you actually went and, and saw something. You got out of your car, you saw something. You, you put it into a bag, you extrapolated how that was gonna look on a canvas, mm -hmm. uh, how it was going to look into your art. And, and being able to make art allows you to look deeply into something in a way that if you weren't, you would have never been looking at, at that beautiful stuff in there. It, it, right. You would have driven right over it. Well, you know, that came from somewhere. And so let's let's, let's yeah. go there. Let's tie that all up. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's a way of making a long story, sto story short, but <laughs> like after I was at college in Edinburgh and, you know, I was talking about Caspar David Friedrich and yeah. standing on the edge of the void and looking into the abyss and wanting to take your viewer there, right, to be there, not to look at a picture of being there, right? I had an experience where I literally fell into the void. I fell 80 feet in darkness on the other side of the planet into a ravine by an active volcano. And in that process, I had this out of body experience of death. And it took me seven days to get to hospital in Singapore and get myself fixed. Um, and from that, I lost use of my right hand. And I had to relearn to use my right hand, I'm right handed. And prior to that, I was painting in a very magical realism style, a trompe l'oeil style, almost like you're taking an, a, a, you're in a lucid dream and you're capturing in Magritte-like manner the subtleties of tone to convey that sense of being within the dream. So falling into this hole, falling into the earth and seeing the strata of the earth. Now, this was in darkness, so I, but I did physically and literally fall into and the earth opened up and swallowed me. That experience both psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically. When I came back to painting, I was living in New Mexico. I was in a barn in the, in the, near Arroyo Hondo, which is north of Taos. And I was rock hounding. And I found this azurite, malachite, and um, these soft pigmented stones. And I started rubbing on panels with rags, oil bases, and dripping oil, and scattering the dust into the surface of these oil drips, and scratching and carving into the, uh, the panels like some form of symbolic language that was moving me at the time. So fast forward some years, and I started to learn about how to make paint from scratch and started to understand that plasters and paint were just set different in thickness and that gessos were, had been formed with marble dust. And the purer the ingredients, the better quality of the paint. Um, a lot of oil paint these days is just has chalk fillers, which takes down the intensity of the colors and, and also the cost. But you start to get into the rudiments of what is paint, of recreating or reformulating paint and say taking pure color found here bought there not all of it is found um, I do buy processed materials now having gone through that rock hounding and grinding and keeping it very raw I learned to make all these paints and plasters from scratch now even in the pyramids in Egypt there was a very fine marble finish on and color to all of 
the material, it, all of the surfaces. And that translated even to ancient Rome. So using limestone and marble dust um, and water, and they would use horsehair and such things like this as a, a way to bind things. I started to learn about traditional making of materials, the building of walls, this, how, surf, how fresco is created. And I've taken those formulas and using like contemporary chemistry of, of polymers and binders, mix them together to create a skin on the surface of the canvas. Now, this also goes back to, sorry, like I said, as a long story, but goes back to my use of, of semi-precious stones in the earlier paintings, because at that point, with my own injury, I was interested too in the healing power of art. So I was interested in um, minerals, in energy, in color therapy through using gemstones. And instead of laying hands on with people, as I did for a long period of time, I wanted to capture the energy in the paintings to make it have even a bigger effect rather than just my hand on one person. How do you capture that energy and place it into something which is almost less sticky? It's more allowing of a personality, it's, of it's a flawed human. Alive. Well, yeah, and you know, in terms of a healing, it's like, it's very hard to separate self from other. And, you know, if you're putting your energy into somebody else in a form of massage, it's still your energy. Is that, you know, to clarify that energy in a true healing way takes still further catharsis and cleansing. So it just became ceremonial. So now when I'm using these materials of limestone, which I use in a, in a lot of pieces for a lot of years, I'm very aware that they're our stories, even of limestone, of how in sacred places, the limestone is like the memory keeper. It will capture the pictures, the sounds, the experiences of everything that's gone on there in the past, and in its own silent way, hold that. Like the ghosts of experience exist within the matter. So that deeply intrigues me. Um, the transformative sense of how you take these different materials and mix them together. Uh, I've been using coppers and metals and the oxidation process for years too. Forever on this planet, blue was all you could see, but in where did you find blue pigment? Right, well, so they, there were wandering uh, sales, pigment salespeople coming from places like Afghanistan, where ultramarine and, and lapis lazuli, that comes from. But that was also very expensive. So early chemistry and alchemy developed in terms of, well, let's make blues and greens from the speed up of the use of metal, the oxidation. So that too became fascinating, but I still didn't want to be just stuck on, oh, well, defined by your material. Right. Because yeah, these the days- The days, materials are in spirit. Right, and not even slapping a patina yeah. on a metal makes it necessarily spirit. It's spirited, it gives a sense of age and time, but what do you, how are you gonna make this your own? How are you gonna do something with it that's, that's other than what everybody else is doing, than what it just does on its own? And, and true voice. Use it to, you yes, know, yes. To make it your own. Yes, yes exactly. Yes, yes. I mean, you, yes, there's ideas you can take from other people and, Yeah, but you know, true voice is essential. I think so, yes. like a reason for it. Yes. And, and so for me, it still comes from, okay, this ladder of color, which we talked about, it rises all the way up and you can use color as a vehicle for all sorts of understanding, yeah. like therapy. Um, you know, that's something else to be talked about. But um, I think making that ethereal, that meta, something concrete, you know, and then to ask questions like, how does a cloud move through a rock? The mountains are carved by water, right? So we're dealing with the water course in every way and observing how the planet works. I mean, if you look even more deeply within the surface of my paintings, you'll start to see that even the earliest layers of some of them have this coral-like form, which just weaves out. And when these form on the pieces, I've noticed like, oh, 
we're looking, that looks like the top of the mountain, that looks like the vein of a leaf, that looks like the strike of lightning, that looks like the, the feet of uh, the, the lower hills of mountains. So, you know, and this is all the micro and the macro. You look in a stone close up and you look at the earth far away and the pattern, this algorithm, this, org, you know, this uh, fractal like nature of existence is repeated from the tiniest to the largest. And you wash one wash upon another upon another and it's creating something new. As, as if it's, you're directing and you're guiding and it's, there's a, to me that's what the creative process is. It's, it's deep enough that, uh, again, the, what we, because it's another whole issue is the passion. You, you've got, there's got to be something in, in art. There's got to be something deep enough at the core to to grip to, you, to, yeah. To right? have this mad passion that you know, there's so, so many other things in life to do than make art. Right. It's that, right. And, and it, it's such a it, it's such a kind of kooky thing at the end of the day to be doing, but it is a mad passion. Right. And it's a mad passion because there is a there there. There is exactly. You know, there is some place, some place that, you know, you're seeking, some place you're finding, um, a place you're coming from, a place you're going to. All of it is very hard to define. Yeah. And I've never thought people should really do it unless they absolutely you have, have to. to. <laughs> that's the one thing we totally agree on. <laughs> yeah, you know. You, Thankfully, you, not the only thing, but yeah. No, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. you... You, you wouldn't wish it upon you anybody you sometimes. You, 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 you know? couldn't encourage anybody to do this unless they absolutely was, Look, their, was their calling. It's like a lot of things. When you're going really deep in the world, like we've been discussing, you know, I mean, we're, talk, we're talking about things which um, are less common. You know, a lot of people experience this. But it takes a tremendous strength to go on a journey and to go farther and beyond than you've ever thought before. It really does and it, it shouldn't, it's not an easy thing to come back from and let's, either. And let's go, let, let's end this again with go back to standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm. Because again, it, it's hard to, you know, we live in our own skin, we don't know what our the brightness of our bulb, what it's mm. doing. Mm. But it, what it does allow us t is to imagine the brightness of the giants. You know, when, mm. I, when, I, when I think mm. of how hot Picasso was burning, mm. uh, right. this, you know, when I think th these people, how hot, how much they, how incandescent they got to mm. create this stuff. Because again, they're breaking through a wall, they're creating a new thing. They're, they're looking for something that hadn't existed yet. They're searching for a language. Uh, you just have to be lit to the core to get there. And Well, that's the best use of lit I've heard in recent years. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's that's true. ultimately, you know, so for us to light up as bright as we can and, th and again that's what you do it like your life depends on it yeah you know like you're here for a short mortal coil and this is the you proof of your dead, existence you know, it's, it's deadly serious it's not a it's not a it's not a it is a game and it's not a game right uh, it's both a one-line joke and is not a one-line joke yeah it, and you, you take it to the people who do it and, and the conversation again that we're interested in expanding is the people who are deeply deeply dedicated to something that is rather irrational. Right, exactly. <laughs> Committed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it there. All right. We're not going to get better. <laughs> Appreciate great. it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark Perry. This is Conversations Collaboration with Paul Seftel. We're out of here. <laughs>